Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian and welcome back to a brand new video on the Susco channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can handle errors in JavaScript. Handling errors is something that some people might think is unnecessary because you need to know when you get an error because then you know where to fix your code. But that isn't always the case. So I'm just gonna show you what it's used for and some other stuff. So error handling is done by using try, catch, and finally. And I will also show how you throw errors, which is a big part in error handling because it's what throws the errors. So to start, we're going to write a try catch statement. So to do that, we just do try and we don't have to put anything after it. So this is already valid syntax. So the try will try to run this code. Now we can say console.log, we are running. Now the next, next thing that I want to do is I want to fail at running. So, um, I'm going to put something random right there. This is nothing, so it will error because this isn't something that can be executed. We just have a random statement that doesn't do anything. And then we log again. This will never run because we fail at running this. Now what happens after running all this stuff is we catch what errors. So we put in parentheses and we can put a name for the error inside of that. So there's a common usage is either error, error or E. I'm going to use error for or error for this example. Now we can log the error. And if we do this, we will see all kinds of information about why the error was originated and what caused it. Now, finally, we can execute our code that will always run. So this will always run. So no matter what happens, so if we uh, finish the try statement, so there was no error, we will run this. But if we fail, we will also run this. Now after this, we will continue running the code, running the code. And that is already basically how we do this. So we have our small error right here, which is something that doesn't exist. So if we want to execute this code, we would see we are running, which is the first thing we are running. Then after that, right after we get the error because something is not right here. So what we do is we say reference error failure is not defined at sketch.js4. So my file is called sketch.js. So what we can see is it says reference error failure is not defined. And that is coming from here. So we run, we are running. Then it sees failure, but failure isn't a thing. I don't know what to do when I see failure. So it errors and it gives us all the information about the error. And then finally, we say this code will always run. And then we continue running the code. So this is what happens. Now, if I remove if I comment out this failure, we would see that we are running. This will never run. This will always run and continue running the code. So we don't log an error because there is no error. We do, however, keep this console.log because we always execute this finally statement. So if we didn't have this try catch and we had the error, we would have an issue because that could break our entire system. Now, an error has a couple of things that I still want to show you, which is a error.stack, which shows this info, which it doesn't always show. We have the message, which is failure is not defined. So instead of showing the entire thing, we only show a little bit. The name is what kind of error it is. So we have a reference error because something is not defined. And that was already it. So you might 
see that it's pretty dumb to use this right here because this will always error because our code won't change so why would we try to run something if we know it will fail and that is because we don't w even want to do this we don't want to try run code that will never f work because that's just something that isn't really useful so instead of making something to run code that will never work we can make it so that we try to execute something if we don't know if it will fail or not so commonly this is used when making api requests or um, doing async stuff which i will get in later what all that asynchronous stuff is with promises and that stuff but basically um you try to execute something that may fail if something goes wrong but you don't know what can go wrong so it isn't just something wrong in your code it's something wrong that you don't know will happen so if we write a function and i'm gonna use a, a weird example um welcome message and we want a name and honestly i want uh, a hobby and age name age and a hobby what some developers might do is if something is uh, the wrong type so instead of having name as a string it would be a number you would throw an error and that could cause issues by crashing our entire side or node project so what we could do is we could try to execute that stuff so we could manually check outside of calling this function if all the required data is valid but we could also check it inside of this function so what we could do is um we could say if the type of name and type of returns a string that holds the type of the um, uh, uh, value provided so we check the type of name and it should be a string so if it's not a string we would throw a new error that would say um, um, name must be a string so we throw something which is an error we create a new error and the error holds this data now instead of just throwing a error that doesn't hold much specific information we can throw different types of errors so we could say a type error which is an error when a value is not the expected type now there are numerous types of errors which you can all look up on the MDN docs but we will be just be using a type error because we want it to be a string now what we want it to be for the age is a number we want to throw a new type error because number or age must be a number and it with an explanation mark then if type of type of if I could spell hobby is not a string we throw a new type error where hobby must be a string all right so if we get data that isn't uh, the correct type we throw an error which will stop running this code which would return an error and then could possibly ruin our entire program so finally I want to return a value and that value is um, hello I am and then the name I am H years old my favorite hobby is and then a hobby so return this value 
so what we then want to do is I want to call welcome message or I want to lock the welcome message and I wanted to give it data so if we provide um, David he is 25 years old he likes to play um, soccer or football whatever I don't really know we would see that it would lock all our stuff so what if we provide a number instead of a name so instead of saying David I want to provide five we see uncall type error name must be a string so we get an error and this will happen if the age is not a number or the hobby is not a string or the name is not a string so what we can do to stop this because if we don't hard code it in but we request it from our uh, users we could th uh, try to get the welcome message with uh, a name of David age of 25 and the hobby of soccer and we catch it with an error and I want to log this and I want to catch it because if it fails I want to say uh, console.log and then what we can use is we can use the message because we get name must be a string um, we could just log uh, error.message so if we do this we would see everything works as normal if we provide valid information but if we change this to 5 again we would see name must be a string so if we were to call this from inside of our console or if we get data from our HTML page and we want to run it we could return a message saying hey this is wrong I won't execute it if we fail you throw an error and you handle the error and you display the error so this was it for the video if you enjoyed it be sure to drop a like and if you haven't already please subscribe and i'll see you in the next episode